Okay, guys, so as you can see, the sub agent has now been launched. If I do control O on my Mac, you'll see that the sub agent has been launched with all of the context that is needed. So pricing, Stripe API keys, all of that documentation that we ingested earlier, specifically for Next.js, all that good stuff, literal exact code copies, etc., etc., And you can just see that this implementation will be much better than a standard implementation. Okay, guys, so welcome to this video. I'm going to be talking about how to basically add the power of LLMs.txt inside your Claude code with four lines of code. So no more errors for implementation. Give your LLMs the power to read any documentation. Let's talk about it. So just before we get into it, let's just do a quick test. So this is with the thing that I'm going to be showing you guys today. Let's see if it works when I just press subscribe now. Now, just so you guys know, this is a follow up from yesterday's video. In yesterday's video, I show you guys how you can take Google AI Studio, anything from Google AI Studio, and easily put a wrapper around it using Claude Code, Convex, and Work OS, basically, for the OAuth system. So now what I'm showing you guys is how you can add Stripe. And I have a very, very specific way to actually add Stripe. So let's just see if this works now. There's a slight problem there. There we go. Boom. This is first time, remember, guys. This is literally first time. So this is without any kind of, um, yeah, back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just see if this works, first of all. So let's do pay and subscribe. We should be able to go here, go to Stripe Listen, and we should actually start to see something coming in here. There we go. 307 is not the best. 307 is, is incorrect, but... At least we can see that that did work. You can see that this didn't actually um, register. So we'll just basically say that now. So we'll just exit out and say, I just ran through. It still says upgrade. Even after payment, please check the logs. Okay, so we'll run through this process again. I'm just signing in um to the same account so there we go signed in pricing subscribe now there's a slight issue there just with the middleware basically kind of a standard issue to be honest with you it's not really like bad code necessarily it's just not complete code not thinking about the fact that i have a middleware for example let's see if this time this works this should show 200s here there we go 200s now, it still does say no active subscription, which means basically the database isn't being updated. But you can basically see that we're getting 200 now, which is exactly what we would want. There we go. So that was possibly the most painless Stripe implementation I have ever had. That was about five minutes on Next.js. Now, how did I actually do this? I'm going to show you guys exactly how this works right here, right now. Now, there are actually two ways to do this. You can either A, use an MCP, such as the Bright Data MCP. There is a link in the description of this video to Bright Data. If you are curious about Bright Data, they allow you to scrape things that the other business, which I'm going to show you guys today, doesn't allow you to scrape. So, for example, if you need to scrape something like Facebook or LinkedIn or something a little bit more difficult to scrape, definitely check out Bright Data. There is a link in the description. However, I actually use Gina. The reason I use Gina for basically everything is because of this right here. It's literally two lines of code, and it's so much easier to train your Claude code or whatever to use two lines of code rather than something a little bit more complicated. Just before we get into the absolute juice of this video, if you are curious about working with me and my dev team, please check out the link in the description. We have a very, very good dev team and also myself. I'm getting better and better every single day. We're looking for more projects for me to sink my teeth into in the last part of 2025, the last quarter, and also the first quarter of 2026. If you have a project that you've been wanting to be made for a while, but you've never really been able to spend 50 to 100,000 on an MVP or spend six months on the same project, Come and talk to us today. We can get it done for much quicker and much 
cheaper than traditional dev agencies. There is a link in the description if you're curious about that. Now, all we do here is we, I can put this prompt in the description of this video, but basically it says when you are looking, when you are using something, for example, Stripe, you should look at the implementation for my particular tech stack first. You can do this by looking for that LLM.txt, then using Gina on that LLM.txt and finding relevant pages. For example, I'm on Next.js and I ask you to implement Stripe, then you should spe specifically look through all relevant pages to help me achieve my goal. If I'm not specific, you should ask me and advise me on the best and easiest way to implement that thing. For example, using Stripe links, if that is easier slash matches my use case. You can use s.gina search or just search yourself on Google to find an LLM.txt of a business. And then I just gave Stripe as an example. And then all you need to do is just give these lines of code right here. These are curl requests. Then all I did was I came here, I did slash memory. I went to project memory or user memory, it doesn't actually matter. Control C to paste and then to write, it's, um, uh, this is Vim, it's colon W to write and then colon Q to quit, right? If you're on um, Mac, then they're the only two pieces of information that you actually need to know. So we now took a project from Google AI Studio, we downloaded it onto React, we got the Next.js convex boilerplate onto our system, we imported the React project into our Next.js project, and then using the system that I just explained, which again, I will put this prompt in the description of this video, and we added Stripe in five to 10 minutes rather than the normal kind of 20 to 25 minutes, right? We should be able to press manage subscription here. I'm not sure if it's gonna work just because um, sometimes the billing portal is a little bit weird. So let's just go browse here and let's just upload a random image. Okay, sure. So this is my image that I decided to upload. This is the same as yesterday, uh, just because it's under one megabyte. And then we should see some dramatic renditions of this. Oh my God, that's so funny. I can't stop looking at this. It's so funny. Oh my God. This is so good to Neo man. Okay. And then we have Stripe fully implemented. Perfect. This was an extremely quick and easy way to actually implement Stripe. It's much easier than the kind of normal guesswork that you have to do. The normal guesswork is extremely stressful and extremely difficult. But if we take the guesswork out of it for Claude Code, you can see how it's much easier. You need to give your AI the ability to find documentation. Now, a lot of people are going to say things like Context 7, for example, MCP. I don't recommend you use the Context 7 MCP. Plus, they made it paid now, so fuck you guys. Don't use this, okay? Fuck um, whatever they're called. I can't even remember what the fucking company is called anymore. Oh, it's Uptash, yeah. Uptash, this was free at one point. I don't really understand why you made this paid. I really think this is dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. Um, but, oh, it looks like it's actually just for private repos and stuff. But still, why make it paid? I just don't understand. So instead, what I recommend you guys do, yeah, is Context 7 a bit of a mess? What am I missing? It is a bit of a mess. It's a complete fucking mess, honestly. What I recommend you do instead is you give Gina or Bright Data to your LLMs. You give it the ability to find LLMs.txt. If you don't know what an LLMs.txt is, if you go on Google and type Stripe LLMs.txt, and click on the first one, you'll see that all it is is a combination of all of the pages that an AI would ever need to build something. You feed this to Gina. I'll just show you actually how this works outside of Claude Code, just so that you guys can understand. So if I go to API here, Control A, Control V here, and then get response, what does this do? It gives all of the links that your AI will need. Your AI can then take this and say, oh, okay, well, I can you know, I, I can look for payment links, right? There it is, payment links, payment links, buy button, payment methods, all that good stuff. And then it can scrape each of these one by one because it knows, right? So let's say payment links, right? Or just a uh, quick start. So it knows that it needs this. Let's just say build an advanced integration. Sure, not, ne not necessarily this one, but let's say it needed this page right here. Control A, Control V. It knows it needs this page, so it then gets the response and it specifically looks for the code. So you can see here, there's actual code here that it can use. 
and start to build your implementation. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. I just wanted to make a video about this quickly because I'm trying to find the best way to implement Stripe. Frankly, boilerplates, I'm going kind of off boilerplates a little bit because for some reason, a lot of them have like loads of mistakes in them and stuff. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find better ways to build. And this is the best way I found to build. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend. Please check out either the school community, the link in the description to talk to us or Bright Data. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.